What is it? There! It's Shulski! Our mighty good chum! Victor! Good to see you! These two shivs claim you know each other. Is that true? It depends on what they did. Well, just a stroke of rotten luck. I asked you a simple question. Yes or no? Yes, I know these noble gentlemen. Well then, I guess we'll take in three instead of two. Go on! Magician, good thing we kidnapped you back then. You're not the schmuck you pretend to be. You're welcome.
Are you deaf? Documents. What kind of... The kind that says you can strut around here. This is a fancy neighborhood. Give me your papers. Oh, documents. How about these? They look fine to me. Well, have a good day, sir. It's got flavor, vitamins, and minerals. I don't drink for health. Vodka. I can see you're having a serious debate, gentlemen. Better tell us what you prefer. Gentlemen, the best alcohol to celebrate is champagne. Look at Mr. Larida here. Vodka and beer aren't good enough for him. Let's chase this fussy drinker out. Let's get him.
nothing can be kept secret from me. Hello, sweet secret. Nothing can be kept secret from me. Aren't your legs getting sore? Stupid question. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time. You want to quote me? Then start writing. Here goes a poem. If I want poetry, I'll read some Konopnitska. In Śródmieście, the bastards went on strike. And that's something I don't like. So I grab an axe in my hand. <sighs> this is a serious story. Workers deserve some respect. Shut the fuck up and write. I grab an axe in my hand and... Victor, give me a rhyme. I will try not to get the clap in my rear end. 
Good one. W.S. I expected more of you. I thought the press lived off that kind of scoop. The press has its limitations, W.S., but we journalists at least try to make a change, unlike many others. What was that about? Don't worry. It's just a shitty situation. Do you want to come by for a drink? I can tell you all about it then. Sure, lead the way. Well, speak. W.S.? Seriously? How lame is that? Anyway, the sewers in the neighborhood were commissioned by Neumeyer, but the workers just dug it all up, and now they're on strike or wandering around. And when I send my shivs after them, more flood in. Do something before I kill them all. Maybe a friend Romek could help. They say he's a good chap. Stop bragging about your adventures. I'm suffering here. You gave him a fat lip and you got a life lesson. Nothing to get dramatic about. What's in it for you? I didn't catch that. It was going to be so great. With the sewers, people would stop pissing on my door. But they just keep digging. So who is that Neumeyer? He came from Germany. Decent fellow. They say he's got some experience in that sort of enterprise. Since when do you regard decent people? Since the sounds of construction keep banging in my ears. The guy has an office on Poznańska Street. You'll see a sign. Why are the workers on strike? Neumeyer, their employer, fired a few of them, so the guys got pissed and started a riot. Maybe I could talk to them. Be my guest. Those that were fired are hanging out in my bar and drinking. And those who still have jobs, uh, you can find them in the southern part of the district. Follow those trenches they dug. You won't miss them. I'll see what I can do. Good. Whatever makes them go back to work. Whether you do some hocus pocus or send a demon after one of them. I don't mind. How about we come up with some buddy names for us? Great idea. I'll leave it up to you. Man, I won't let you down. Hey, Wower, stop making faces and buy another round. We need to drink to Neumeyer breaking his stupid face. And where do I get the dough? Besides, I ain't a woo... wow... wooer. Easy there, or you're going to pop a vein. Let's get some shots to warm us up. Although you've got your lady love for that, right? Go fuck yourself. What do you want? Oi, Janusz, we've got company. Is he buying, or just making a fuss? I'm impressed with the male bonding that you apparently share. It seems so enduring. Magnificent. Oi, Janusz! Is he, like, making advances at us? <sighs> Too much beard for my taste. Marionic? If he buys us vodka, we can cuddle. Vodka? With working people? Any time, any place, and with respect. It's on me. In that case, all is fine and dandy, my dear friend. Wait, Marionic, wait, it's too much. I mean, too much... manana. What? Who are you? Really? I'm a thaumaturge, Viktor Shulsky. Oh, so you're gonna enchant us? <laughs> Janusz, look! I'll be a thamita... Thamar... Thamar... Ah, whatever! 
Wait, wait, Marian. Wasn't that dickhead Neumeyer friends with a Shulski? Also a thaumaturge? Fuck me, it was all right. You probably mean my father. Fuck it, what's the difference? Get the vodka and fuck off. The things people come up with. I'll do some exploring. The telephone. This is negotiation, so let's negotiate. You won't finish the job without us. That's the truth. Mr. Neumeyer? Nicht jetzt. How many times do I have to tell you? This can't be done. It doesn't work like that. That's not how you do Geschäfte. Listen, sir, we won't give up. Either you can take back the men you fired, or you can say goodbye to the workers you've got left. You can build these sewers yourself. You lousy capitalist asshole. Rude! This is just gutter talk, not negotiations. The gutter is quite fitting, actually. You're building the sewers, after all. Ah. It's a joke. Who are you, and what do you want? I wanted to talk to you. Zeit ist Geld. I don't have time. Neither for you nor for these negotiations. Let's go back to work. No. Lads, the strike's still on. We're not touching the work. It's knockoff time until further notice. Maybe now you can spare me a moment? Not here. Follow me, please. I bet you regret those layoffs now, don't you? Better hair. I deal with that kind of aggression every day. I got used to it. 
Scientist Geld, what brings you here? Why did the workers go on strike? Sir, I fired those who drank at work and everyone suddenly went mad. You're Poland. I don't understand you. It's time to bring this country into the 20th century. In Germany, it's unthinkable to drink vodka at work. So, what's the story with those layoffs? I don't like inaction. So when I set new rules and people kept drinking, I gave them an ultimatum. And how much time did you give them to adapt to the new rules? What do you mean? There's action and there's reaction. I set the new rules on Monday and on Wednesday I let them go. What you did was stupid. Are you standing up for these drunkards? What, are you a socialist? That's not the point. You can't expect these people to change overnight. What do you mean by aggression? I'm talking about that troglodyte, that ruder guy. Diesen Mistkerl. What did he do? He smeared my office windows with shit. Scheiße! I know it was him. I know it. I have no proof, but I know it. Can you imagine that gestank? That stink? I'll get going. I had my reasons, mostly concerning work ethics, but there are always many factors involved. This is kompliziert. You know what it's like. So Neumeyer never tried to find a solution? German Ordnung stifles the proletariat, you might say? That's what it looks like, and that's what we're saying. I can see I'm not the only one who wants to talk to you. I don't like crowds. I'll come back to you later. Do you have another joke to tell? Not this time. I wanted to talk. Go ahead, ask. I don't have anything to do anyway. I wanted to know the story behind those layoffs, from your point of view. The story. The story. Sir, this is all bullshit. That's the whole story. You know that Neumeyer banned drinking at work. He mentioned it. But he suggested it wasn't the only reason. Well, there you go. He said it himself. The cat's out of the bag. The drinking wasn't why he fired those people. Then what was it? I don't care. People end up in the streets, families get deprived of their livelihoods, and that bastard plays the angel. I won't have it. None of us will work until all the boys are back. Are you friends with Mr. Fagin? No, but at least he's trying to cover the issue fairly. What the censorship will do with it is another story, though. Do you know anything more about him? Even if I knew, I wouldn't say. I won't bother you anymore. Mr. Neumeyer? Yeah? Deep in your heart you know what's important. What the right thing to do is. It's the man that counts, not the horse. Yeah, you're right. Meine Herren, listen to me, please. I know some bad words have been said, but I have found a solution. Your Freunde will go back to work. Really? Yeah. 
I've understood what really matters. You are the most important. Now, everyone can get back to work. Ich verspreche es. Has he lost his mind or what? Gentlemen, it worked. We'll start a union. Done. The wheels are in motion. I'm accepting compliments. I could kiss your forehead. How did you manage to do that? It turned out Neumeyer had a purebred horse. It was worth enough to re-employ all the people he had fired. So he decided to sell it. How generous. And voluntarily, of course. Of course. Believe it or not, I've been quite busy myself. Listen to this. Spirit King and Phantom Prince. Or better yet, Poet and Pilgrim. Get it? You're the poet and I'm the pilgrim because I've traveled a lot? You bet. And fuck that guy with his WS. So see you around, Pilgrim. Since we keep following one another around, maybe we should introduce ourselves. What are you talking about? I've got the impression that I've caught your gents' attention. I'm curious why. Don't you know where curiosity like that can get you? It'll cause you nothing but trouble. You guys are so devoted. Is the pay worth so much hard work? Maybe it's time to fight for a raise. I don't want to keep mucking around in this crap. Not for this kind of money. Following some spoiled brat around, standing for hours outside people's windows. And God alone knows what for. Not for this kind of money. Wait up. I'm not gonna stand here on my own with him. Let's talk to the chief. I had no idea about this place. Hello, sweet secret.
I think that's everything now. So, besides father, there were two more. A candy lover and a coffee lover. Konieczkin must have had one of them in mind. The one with the sweet tooth looks like a rabbi. I should look for him in the synagogue. The coffee lover, meanwhile. That's what I call you now. The doctor. Because you help rabbis and people the hospital is off limits to. Rebels and revolutionaries. Luckily, I know someone who matches the description. Maybe we'll find out what she needed that ammunition for. Come on, we'll be careful. Time to get some donuts out of the eats. Is that cat and staff too? You bet. He stirs the beer with his tail. What can I get you? Yes, one donut, please. Even if I had any, I wouldn't recommend them. But I heard I was supposed to order a donut. Here. It's all right, Yannick. I know him. Trouble follows you wherever you go. Well, that makes two of us. Can we speak in private? If I must. Don't move a muscle. I've got deja vu. Silence. Forgive our caution. Despite those delightful moments in the cell, I still don't trust you. The ones who get out so quickly have friends in high places. What about you, Shulski? Meet Miha, and tell us, what do you actually want? We parted in fairly unfavorable circumstances. Forgive me, Victor, but I have no desire to reveal all my secrets to you. Can we get to the point? I need help. And I'll help you because I'm a nice neighborhood girl, right? Exactly. I could sense you had a heart of gold. Speak. I'm giving you a chance. You can leave us. Come, Victor. Tell me what brings you here. So these are the famous suites. Underground combat. Are you from the PPS? The friendly neighborhood girl threw you off? 
I didn't fall for it for one second. You're a terrible liar. What brings you to this sweet place? You stole the Dutch pomade shipment. I read about it on the train from Vienna. We're famous, yes, that's true. But I won't tell you where it is, nor what it will be used for. How exactly are you going to serve the cause? The PPS has extensive structures. Most members engage in demonstrations or meetings, underground lectures. I know a certain woman who's keenly interested in them. Bring her sometime. Maybe someday. We're part of the PPS combat organization. We use more radical methods. Do you shoot as well, or just carry ammo? Want to find out? Is Bergrodbis' cafe frequented only by your sympathizers? No, but the name is known only by a select few. Why did the PPS choose this particular place? It's just one of many where we get together. The beer is drinkable here, and the boys are nice. Actually, something else brings me here. What are you up to this evening? Is that an offer, or are you just nosy? It's an offer. Tonight, I am overthrowing the Patriarchy. Will you join me? I'll wait until you're toppling the monarchy. That's probably going to be next week, right? More or less, I'll let you know. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? I'm looking for a particular man. He's a doctor and a thaumaturge. He treats people with rather radical views. Who do you mean? Us? Correct me if I'm wrong. Diplomatic. I'm sorry. We don't betray our comrades to anyone who asks. So you do know one another after all. Who knows? How about this? I won't ask for anything else, but please, pass something on to him from me. Are you praying to an onion? Hush. What should I pass on to this doctor? Not bad. Not bad at all. Adulthood is like an onion. The more you try to separate it out into its basic parts, the worse it stings and makes you want to cry. Done. What can he make out of that? Cough syrup? Just pass it on to him. He'll know. You're peculiar. Anything else? I'll be off now. If I get an answer from the doctor, I'll let you know. Look after yourself.
Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. I see what it is you are getting at, but the collection still seems to have some missing pieces. Please, keep looking. We need bold concepts, unusual combinations. I'm counting on you. Meanwhile, I shall attend to my work. Please, excuse me. I won't bother you. All right. Fagin? W.S., it's good that you're here. Did you get my message? Indeed. I need your help. Did someone get upset that you were following him, sniffing after a scandal? No, I've gotten used to that already. This is something bigger. What is it? Have you heard what happened at Vienna Station? No. There was an attack. Bloody and brazen. Several dead. All of them civilians, it seems. A new group of fanatics have taken credit for the assassination. They call themselves Lechites. The Russians have put Zhukov himself on the case. I want to write about it. The truth. But I need help. What did I do to earn such trust? I liked how you handled the case of the Krajewskis and Pietya Alexandrovich. Krajewski hasn't said a thing since then. Impressive, but also a bit scary. There is no one in Warsaw more suitable for what I am about to propose to you. You flatter me. Enough to get you interested in this case? I've never written an article. How can I help? I'll handle the writing. You focus on finding these Lachites. I want to eliminate the possibility of this being a Russian provocation. I'll interview them. What do you make of this? Zukov, is he that famous investigator? They say he's amazing and very effective. If the Ruskies have got him on this case, it must be the top priority. Anything else? I wouldn't be so sure the censors would allow you to print something like this. I don't write exclusively for state-run newspapers. Have you ever heard anything about Kimichits? I haven't. I only know the character from the book by Shinkevich. It's nothing special. This is my pseudonym for a certain underground publication. I'll admit that I am rather well known in patriotic circles as Kimichits. Congratulations. Keep asking. Who are those Lehites? Nobody knows. They've shown up in Warsaw only recently. This is the first attack they've taken credit for. That's why I want to reach out and talk to them. Anything else? Who died in this attack? That's what's suspicious. Nobody knows. The list of victims has been classified, but I know that they're most likely civilians, random people, Poles. 
The Lachites fancy themselves patriots, and look what we have here. That's enough for me to start with. So you agree? Yes. Maybe I'll reach out to Uncle. Good idea, because you need a pass to access the attack site. They won't just let anyone in. No offense. Do you ever see Vonda? Perhaps I should speak to her. Wonderful. Fine. And when you happen to stumble across a Lahite, don't forget to call me. It's a Shrud Mistia number, 3490. I'm also leaving you their manifesto. I just want to talk to them and write an honest article about them, in Polish. Have you missed me already? I will deliver your onion, don't worry. So this cause of yours... What do you want to know? Actually, something else brings me here. What do you know about the Lehites, the new stars of the revolution? You're asking me because you thought that was your best bet? I don't know much about your struggle. I came to ask experts. Don't be so smart. What do you think about their manifesto? They only did it for recognition. Pathetic, amateurish methods of getting attention. I despise them all. But maybe you can help the lady. Do you know where to find them? Sadly, no. I'm trying to figure it out. Just don't forget to come and tell me. I'll gladly sort them out myself. So, what are you up to this evening? Victor, let's be friends. That sentence pains me like a burn every time I hear it. Don't be melodramatic. Is there anything else you wanted to ask? I'll be off now. Too bad. Stay out of trouble, wizard. Let's wait until... So, let's kill some time.
Might I take a moment of your time? Detective Zukov, right? I'm not an idiot. I didn't call you an idiot. I'm trying to stay ahead of the facts. I want to save us both time, which is why I decided to warn you. I'm listening. I think I could... Help with finding the attackers, I know. Yes, for the love of God. Just don't ask me how I figured it out. I requested a thaumaturge myself, but it will be at least a week before he arrives in Warsaw. So, you're stuck with me. Let's get to the point then. I trust you will share your knowledge with me when you manage to locate the Lechites. Be so kind as to come back to me. Of course. Please tell me, why does this matter concern you? I want the culprits to receive just punishment. And do you realize that the concept of justice is uniquely human, typically not present in nature? Is there anything else? Seeing as we're working together, Perhaps you'd like to make things easier for me and be so kind as to issue me some sort of a toss? Nonsense. I would never sign such a thing. I told you, I'm not an idiot. Our cooperation is extremely unofficial. You were never here, and I never gave you any answers. Have you learned the identities of the victims from Vienna Station? The station is virtually impossible to examine during such a short period of time. At least for Warsaw investigators, anyway. And it looks like all the victims were random people. Perhaps some things will clear up once we're allowed to talk to the injured witnesses. I'm waiting for a call regarding this matter. So, there are survivors? I've already said too much. Meeting you was a most interesting experience. Let's do this again when you find the Lekites. May I have a moment of your time, Uncle? Your timing couldn't be worse. I'm swamped with work. This attack at the railway station has the highest priority now. That's what I've come to talk to you about. First of all, keep your voice down. Secondly, I won't tell you anything because I'm not allowed to say anything. And third, are you involved with this in any way? I thought I could help as a thaumaturge. Unfortunately, I'm not able to help you, dear boy. You've helped enough already. You've helped me, Pietia, and the Krajewskis. All I can do now is make a dramatic exit and leave you alone here. With all these papers, passes, and official stamps. I'm in a hurry, lad. I'd rather you not be here when I return. Judge Voronin is not in. I know. I'm his nephew. Oh, it would be a sin not to make use of it. No, oh, a Hammond machine. Good brand. Everything all right there, Mr. Yes, sure. Stamp looks worn out. To be expected, Uncle is rather heavy handed. May I offer you something to drink? Detective, 
I'll admit I didn't expect you back so soon. Meeting you was a most interesting experience. Let's do this again when you find the Lekites. No entry. Fodden yet. Zakritya. What attack are you talking about? The Lahites terrorists. They planted a bomb. Dead bodies went flying all over the station. Fodden yet. In your boot yet. Congratulations, soldier. Exemplary attitude. But I really have to look around here, so if you'll just let me. If the judge himself issued it. Thank you. I will report to him about your stellar performance. But if you were to ask about me, I was never here. Kanyashna. Spasiba. Let's take a look around.
Excuse me. Could I interrupt you for a moment? I'm with a patient. What do you want? I'm investigating the attack, and I need to ask you a few questions. What agency are you with? May I have a word with you? Yes, sir. I brought her teddy bear. Please, give it to her later. That's nice. Although, you know... I know that this won't bring back her mother or her eyes. Still, thank you. What do you think she was doing at the station? I can surmise that she and her mother had either just arrived or were about to depart. Stefania Lipnitska. All I know is that she died in the attack. How's the impatient doing? She finally fell asleep and is a lot calmer now. But unfortunately, we couldn't save her eyesight. For a while after the operation, she would cry out for her mother and her teddy bear. The last thing she saw was her mother's death. What else would you like to know? Maybe I'll return later. Hello. What is it this time, and where are my things? Give me back my clothes already so I can get out of here. Unless you want to shove a thermometer up my ass again, let's have it then, because I'm drowsy. And morphine. I'm in pain. Are you even a doctor? You could say I'm a doctor of souls. Like a priest. Is there something you wish to confess? You're no doctor. What the fuck do you want? Well then, how are you feeling? Sleepy. You're boring me. I know the station is your doing, Ule Height. I don't know what you're talking about. How about that morphine, then? I'll leave you alone, for now. I'm glad I caught you. I see you feeling better. Well, it seems I'm a lucky guy. What is it? Why won't you open up to me? After all, you want to send a message to the entire world. You want everyone to hear about you, to admire you. Do you know who Kmichitz is? He's eager to write about you. In Polish. For a Polish underground newspaper. About the heroes of the self-proclaimed struggle against the occupiers. What are you on about? Do you know Kamichitz personally? 
Yes, he can't wait. Is that so? Well, I might be able to tell it to some people, and some people will give you our answer. Where and when can we meet? Calm down, magician. We'll reach out to you. Nothing can be kept secret from me. What's the noise? Over here, young master! For God's sake, young master! What is the meaning of this? This is the message I've been waiting for. Telephones exist. I'd better sweep it up before the young miss sees it, and then I'll call a glass worker. I won't tell her. This will be our little secret. Indeed, exactly. The things people come up with. Please connect me with Fagin, the editor, Śródmieście 3490. Yes, I'll hold. Thank you. Hello? It's me, W.S. Have you learned anything? They reached out to me. I'm keeping the brick, but someone should compensate me for the window pane. 
I'll install it myself. My father was a glazier. Do you know where our bloodthirsty patriots are hiding? We're supposed to meet in Pavishla near the market. They'll have a carriage waiting. I'm on my way. And I'll think about whether I should notify somebody else. Detective. I'll admit I didn't expect you back so soon. I want to ask what you think about the Lehi's motives. Do you see them as significant? Their motives are inconsequential to me. The effects of their methods do a lot to undermine them. What you want to know is what I think of Poles who fight for their country in this way. That's right. It's not worth the trouble to lose or take lives in the name of a notion so abstract as the state. Is that all? The Lehites reached out to me and agreed to a meeting. In Pavishla, near the market, I'm supposed to get into the carriage they will have arranged to wait for me. We'll follow you. My people will be there before you arrive. See you. Have you been waiting long? I'm a journalist. I can be patient when I know I'll be rewarded for it. I see that the carriage hasn't arrived yet. I'm sure they're watching us. Patience. Tell me what you have for me before they get here. I have information for you that may prove useful during the interview. Let's start with how you convinced the Lahites to reach out. This wasn't difficult. I tracked down the attacker. Christian Krul survived the explosion of his own bomb. He was lying in Praga Hospital and is fanatically devoted to the cause. Not bad. And the culprit was right under Zukov's nose all this time. Is there anything else? Isabella Lipnicka, Stefania's little daughter, is at Praga Hospital. She lost her eyesight due to the attack. And you probably want to suggest that I not mention her in the article. The little girl lost her eyesight and her mother, and now she'll be branded as a traitor's daughter. The child has nothing to do with this. Viktor Shulsky, knight in shining armor. Unfortunately, every truth carries a price. You're doing fine. What else? I renewed my contact with the Socialists. 
Well, well. How often do you see Vonda? They want to be as far away from the Lehites as possible, and even go so far as to treat them with hostility. I like this dichotomy. A common goal, and yet, a moral challenge. I would very much like to hear the other side's version. This is everything I've been able to find. Incredible. We must work together more often. Does your conscience bother you sometimes because of the things you write? Never, if what I write is the truth. A lot when I write to please the censors in the courier. What exactly do you intend to write about the Lehites? I told you, the truth. I want to know if they're Polish patriots who made a mistake, or if they're Russian provocateurs who want to destroy the socialists. Or if they're just a bunch of lunatics. I think that's for us. Fine. Let's not keep them waiting. Finally! Huh. So, this is the famous Kimichits. The Herald of the Revolution! We have a lot in common. That remains to be seen. And this must be Mr. Shulsky. Strange company for a socialist. In that case, you're just common terrorists. Don't think so loud. I care about this interview. All right, this is your interview. Thank you. You will be the first to bring the testimony of the Lahites to the Poles. You will be famous. What did you want to achieve with this attack? To sow fear in imperialistic hearts. To show what fate awaits those who betray Poland. Innocent bystanders died there, not traitors. They had families. They were on a journey from which they would never return. W.S. Your victims were all Poles. Doesn't that conflict with your postulations? Please, don't twist our intentions. What are the biggest differences between you and the Socialists? Because a trusted source tells me that they have a decidedly negative view of your organization. Socialism is our biggest difference, sir. I wonder who it is. What's going on here? This interview's over. Palyaki, lay down your arms. You're surrounded, detained, and under arrest. I hope you resist. You betrayed us!
didn't you mention the presence of the esteemed editor? I didn't want to risk losing our advantage, which was the element of surprise. It's all right. None of what transpired here will make its way into the courier, Mr. Fagging. Thank you. I can't wait to sit down and write. Can't wait for Kimichits to sit down and write, I mean. Can we get out of here already? There's one more matter I would like you to consider. That is, should you have the misfortune of dying before I do, would you be willing to bequeath me your brain for research? I don't think you'd have much use for it. I see. And now, be so kind and disperse. This is no place for civilians. Tell me, W.S., in what words would you like to be described? How about W.S.? Who knows? Maybe it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I don't think so. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. I see what it is you are getting at, but the collection still seems to have some missing pieces. Please, keep looking. We need bold concepts, unusual combinations. I'm counting on you. Meanwhile, I shall attend to my work. Please, excuse me. I won't bother you. All right. I have too much to do.
Hello. You said a month, two at most. I believed you. Then came the very first rain, and it was pouring in again. You fixed it, then the next rain. Soaked. I can't sleep because I have to keep emptying buckets. It's leaking just as badly as it was before. But the eyes of God are in every place, and they're watching. Rabbi, when I said two months, you said there was one hole in the ceiling, but the whole building is in shambles here. I can do it. Quiet. You can seal up your daddy's barn with straw. The roof is gonna get holes because the foundations are crumbling. So, let's go down to the basement. Oh no, definitely not there. What's in the basement that's so frightening? Hashem, something down there reeks so awful that... Come now, don't be silly. Why do you afflict me so? I know why, because you know I shall bear it. Well, sir, are you just here to listen, or have you got something to say? Am I speaking to Rabbi Sofer? You see, all I got to do is mention these cellars, and his name comes up. Would Hashem let a synagogue be haunted? Hey now, quiet. You're too late, I'm afraid. My name is Feldman. Rabbi Sofer departed this world almost a year ago. Forgive me, I have worldly matters to attend to. I understand, Rabbi. And if someone were to help you with these workers? In the words of the market woman trying to tempt a Jewish man into idolatry, what harm would it do? <laughs> I understand. Back up. God helps those who help themselves. But maybe you're right, Rabbi. Maybe Hashem is afflicting us, setting a test for us. You heard the guy talking about Sofer. The old man cursed this place, especially these cellars. So I'll go on my own, and show that Hashem protects me against curses in Hashem's domain. On your own. You can seal up your daddy's barn, right? Fine, let's go. You've gotten the better of me again, Hashem. Your tests still surprise me. But if this is your will, I think Hashem has sent you to me. Who are you? I'm the son of Stanisław Szulski. And I really need help. Let's go into my office. Let's show Hashem we accept the challenge.
That's him. The one with the book. You oozing carbuncle. You ain't had enough of Warsaw yet? So you're sticking your nose in on people here? You know what happens to fellas who sniff around where they ain't supposed to? Miruf, don't kid around with them. And who am I supposedly bothering? And you've wasted the chance to keep your mouth shut. We'll cure this posh boy of his nosiness, you can bet. Talking nonsense! Did you hear about Praga? I'm at the harbor getting fish, and half the wharf is in splinters. They said there's even bodies. More bodies than they usually fish out of the Vistula. Practically every day. They were only just writing about Povishle. But listen to this. They're saying it's some giant did it all. You sure? Maybe I can help. Recently I've taken an interest in one of those. Leave us alone. Did you wander in here by mistake? I hope those guys outside are your relatives. Otherwise, you're paying too much for your protection. Are you scared of something? 
I'm not easily frightened. I have the time spent working with your father to thank for that. You got some dirty laundry that needs cleaning, Mr. Shulsky. I was interested in this giant you mentioned to the fishmonger. I can't help you. Rabbis are the ones who deal with golems. I didn't say anything about a golem. I'm afraid I can't help you. And now, if you'd like... You were curious how my father died. Beneath the ruins of a building in Shrudmieszcze. That's awful. How did it happen? I'm glad you're asking. A remarkable death, isn't it? Yes. Let's have a word about your conflict with my father. There was no such thing. I have warm feelings for the store, and his father as well. Why did you quit working for my father? It was a mutual decision. I know that you and my father parted ways in bad terms. What happened? We both had difficult personalities, but I still remember him fondly. You're not telling me everything. I don't have to explain myself to you, Mr. Sholsky. I'm leaving now, but I can tell this won't be the last time we meet. Farewell. Is there something else you need? Let's talk about your relationship with my father. A tense relationship. Mr. Shulsky, I'll say it one more time. Stanislav and I didn't quarrel. Liar. Your anger still lingers around the photograph of my father. You're going to find it hard to hide anything from me. I'm not in the habit of speaking ill of the dead, Mr. Shulsky. Especially to their family. Old grudges drove us apart. Not all stains are easy to remove. Especially ones on a person's honor. And might they give you a reason to seek revenge? A motive? I can't summon golems if that's what you're getting at. But you know there is such a possibility. Is that all? I need to get back to work. I'm leaving now, but I can tell this won't be the last time we meet. Farewell. Please, tell me what problem brought you here. Rabbi Sofer puts a curse on my father. Unfortunately, it started affecting his children as well. A curse is a serious accusation, you know. I find it hard to believe Sofer would do such a thing. Maybe, Rabbi, you could tell me something about golems. Son of Stanislav. Golems are a matter of Kabbalah, and you are not allowed to study them. It's a trap for a soul. 
There are tales of golems being summoned for revenge, or in good faith, for protection. But they all end rather badly. And you claim that Sofer supposedly sent a golem? I don't know. Did the old rabbi perhaps leave some things here? May I take a look at them? Yes, here you are. All his books are here. I don't think I threw anything out. Is there anything else I can help you with? I'll be off now. I'll pray for you. Mordechai Hayat. What do you know? Rabbi? I'm listening. I found a prescription belonging to the old rabbi. Was something troubling him? He had heart problems. The local pharmacist would even bring him some kind of special medicine. What was that pharmacist called? Abraham Horowitz. But now his pharmacy is sitting empty. Let me guess. He's dead? Unfortunately. Some say that the socialists were involved. Others claim it was the Ochrana's doing. Let's keep talking, if you need to. Rabbi, could you tell me something about Sofer? He was fair, but also difficult and very principled, like this city. Riots, provocations, pogroms, overpopulation. But if he's the one who inflicted the curse, he must have been a powerful thaumaturge and Kabbalist. Who can summon a golem? Normally, it's determined by need. The Kabbalist rabbi summons the golem himself, but other Jewish people can also entreat him to do so. In legends, the Golem is a terrible punishment and a tool for meeting out divine justice. But I think it's an offense against Hashem, and revenge is no justice. How can I stop a Golem? To summon it to life, you write the three Hebrew letters spelling MS, truth, on the clay that formed it. In an attempt to stop the monster, the heroes of these legends would erase the first letter from its clay body. That leaves mess, which means death. But I don't know how much truth is in that. Rabbi, could you help me understand something about Kabbalah? No, and I'll say no more on the subject. I fear for your soul. I'm afraid that I won't find anything more here. Thank you, Rabbi. Rabbi? I'm listening. Mordechai Chayat. Do you know that name, Rabbi? He owns one of the laundries here in Miruf, but I admit he doesn't really come to see me. Maybe there are other things I could be of more help with. I'll be off now. I'll pray for you.
Mr. Shulsky again. Have a new theory. I know about the pharmacist. Beg your pardon? All this is because Abraham Horowitz, isn't it? He lost his life, and the whole community felt it. Seems like you did most of all. I just don't get why Horowitz was so important to you. Community. Something you Shulskis don't know a thing about. Here, we take care of everyone equally. No one is more or less important than anyone else. Your father's punishment was fitting for his actions and his background. The wrath of the Jewish people. A death for a death. Was it worth it? A golem is a blunt instrument that kills and harms everyone in reach. What are you talking about? I don't think the punishment is adequate for the crime. Horowitz had something on his conscience. He must have, if both the Ohrana and the Socialists were interested in him. And what my father did... I can't believe I'm saying this, but his motives seem noble. Oh, do they? There's no trace of cruelty in his actions. He didn't do it for his own profit, but for some kind of... greater good. Without any specifics, those are just words. You wanted to teach my father a lesson, and you did. It's too bad innocent people died in the process. The building that collapsed on Stanisław, it was inhabited by people. Now all that's left of them are some damaged items. That's what happens every time the golem physically manifests. Random people lose their lives due to its untamed power. No, it can't be. It wasn't supposed to be that way. My father and Sofer knew one another for years. Father knew the rabbi could be forced to create a golem if Horowitz was killed. They both took that risk. Sofer couldn't reveal that he knew Stanisław. He also knew that Horowitz had to disappear because he was a threat to too many people. To whom? That doesn't matter. You don't have anything to do with this, Mordechai. Just like I have nothing to do with my father's actions. I am connected to them only by my blood. What do you want? To get rid of the golem. Tell me something, anything, that will get me closer to a solution. Instead of telling you, I'll show you. Where? Into an alley, where some friend of yours will smack me around? To the synagogue. Are you coming? Yes, let's go. We'll stop to get Feldman. He should see this too. So... No wonder the roof is leaking if the foundation is crumbling. 
a lovely metaphor, Hashem. But what happened here had nothing to do with Hashem. Did it? Mr. Shulsky wished to know the origin of his curse. This is where it took its shape. If I'd... Now I see it differently, but... But back then, when I was talking to Sofer, revenge and justice seemed one and the same. Revenge is no justice. It is always dictated by anger, and in anger, erring comes easily. But Sofer agreed to it. He summoned the golem. What else do you want to know? This place won't tell me any more. And what have you learned? The hole you can't miss over there is the new door the golem smashed when it was summoned to life. And no one saw anything. How is that possible? Is that your worry, Rabbi? The clay formed a shell that Sofer infused with the Salutar. Sofer told me to bring clay. Sticky and cold. I can't say how many of those buckets there were. Hours sculpting the Colossus until my hands went numb. I could feel the clay absorbing my anger as if my rage was making it take shape on its own. Hours? That must have been horribly exhausting. What's a few hours in exchange for a curse that lasts generations? Mmm. These are the remains of some fabric that Sofa wrote something on, in Hebrew, I think. This might be some prayer, incantation, even a spell. There's not enough left to read anything. That's all, but I'm not any closer to a solution. I need someone like Sofer. A thaumaturge and a Kabbalist? Do you know one, Rabbi? There's only one name that comes to mind, but... Ariel Rofe. A good-for-nothing, vengeful, godless scoundrel. Strong words from your lips. Of course. Do you know one another? Well, I know him well enough to suspect that he might not want to help me, but I'll look for him. Clearly the Shulsky family has an easy time getting into conflict with the Jews. Come now, don't be silly. There is just one thing I'd really like to know, Mr. Shulsky. Standing where you are now, what do you think about your father's responsibility in all of this? My father deserved everything he got. He made a mistake, and mistakes come with a cost. What was this mistake? My father decided that an idea of his, an opinion of his, was more important than someone's life. If I'd known how 15 years ago, I'd have sent a ton of raging clay after him. How much anger must a person hold inside to do something like this? Revenge isn't justice. Who are you or Sofer to decide who deserves what punishment? All right, I think it's time for us to go. This place just makes the blood boil. Let's get Mr. Shulsky away from here and stop by tomorrow. We'll have some tea and work through a few questions. Mr. Shulsky, I would like this to be our farewell. I tell you from my heart, anger and pride are poor advisors. I know that firsthand, but it's too late for me. You can still save yourself. I'll be thinking of you. Shall we? Let's get out of here.